one, go. Oh, I hear we're back now. I just got the signal from Shelby, but I'm enjoying my amazing little Shavasana break, and I hope that you're taking a few of those too throughout the day. You can notice that I have some props here under my thighs, right at the base of the glutes. And it just relieves the tension in the uh, lumbar sacral area. So it's a lovely adaptation for Shavasana. So never hesitate to use a prop if you have a shoulder or an arm or a wrist. Support, what an idea, support, ah. It feels good. Now I could lay here for the next 20, 30 minutes, but I won't. That's not my job. So I'll bring my feet to the floor. I'll remove my blocks. And because I've been enjoying a little break, I think I will walk my heels closer up to my buttocks, press my hands into the earth, roll my transverse abdominis or roll the pubis bone up, keep the ribs down, and then just press, press the lower back into the earth. To me, that's a, ah, oh, it feels very good. I'm gonna press my feet into the earth, activate the quads, and just bring the spine off the ground a little bit and roll into a tiny bridge. Satsubandha, just a couple times. Activating the glutes, pulling the perineal floor, pushing through the feet, oh yes. And then I lengthen through the tailbone and come down. That feels good. One more time, activate the glutes, draw in the perineal floor, ribs and transfers of dominus come together. And last time down. Oh, that feels lovely. I need a little stretch in here, forehead to knee. And then we're going to roll up to sitting. If you have lower back issues, do this carefully. Keep the chin tucked, bring the feet over the head, and roll up to sitting. Or please be cautious and come up on the side and the head's the last thing that comes up. So you can preserve your lower spine in that instance. It's getting darker outside. We're getting closer to Halloween too. Oh, Shelby, you have to remind me when the Halloween party is at the library so I can have. So if you live in Athens, Ohio, the library is sponsoring a Halloween get together. Is that correct? Yeah, we're doing, um, we are doing a fall festival drive-through uh, on the Friday after I'm recording this, so I think it'll already <laughs> be over by the time it's posted. Uh-oh. But, yeah, that'll be coming up, and I hope you all enjoyed it if you went. That's great. So which <laughs> Friday is that? It's, uh, it is Friday the 22nd. And today's the 21st. Yeah. That means it's manana. So... Get your costumes on and drive through the Athens. <laughs> is this just at the Home Avenue? Yeah, library? just at the Home Street. Yeah, Athens County is blessed with how many libraries do we have, Shelby? Seven total. Whoops, it's <laughs> a little scary. <laughs> Seven. No, <laughs> that's amazing. So get on your best costume and come have a little treat. I'm sure it'll be all healthy food, fruits, <laughs> no, probably a little bit of candy in there too. So brush your teeth good that night. All right, that's my typical yoga class. We laugh, we talk, we do community events. We often even put out blessings or awareness to the community at large if they need it, or just announce different activities that might be happening. So you can add a little meta-analysis to your yoga class and enjoy. We're going to review a few of the seated poses names, and you can practice them on your own, but here we are sitting in staff pose, Dandasana. So we have a 90 degree angle with our body. Hands can rest on the thighs. Fingertips can be by the hips and roll down. Just do that with one side and see what that does to your body. And you can add the head motion 
That's a nice little stretch. Become aware of a lot of different things in the shoulder girl and the pec areas and collarbones. And then you can look to the other side for a little slightly different stretch. Both fingers allows you to squeeze the scaps together and get a nice little small back bend, mostly of the upper thoracic spine, and that's a tough place to bend. So that's the second position. You can also reach a little further back and roll the um, <coughs> heels of the hands uh, or the wrists down and stretch up. That's a little harder for me, but do what feels good for you. Try them all and enjoy. So even though I'm opening the chest, I'm not poking my ribs out. They're staying connected. But I'm squeezing and lifting. Oh, that feels pretty good. Dandasana, staff pose. A lot of times it's hard on folks with hamstring and or lower back tightness here or hamstring tightness. So you might find that having something underneath your knees, pulling the flesh away from the sits bones, and even having a slight, and this is probably one fold too many, but a slight elevation of the, the buttocks muscles, and then I slide off of it. So it's pulling the muscles back and that softens here and softens the attachments, particularly having a support here. It's much easier to sit tall. So practice what works best for you. Again, chin not up in the air, but sliding up and in, ribs, transverse abdominis, moving together. Don Das and a staff pose. It's more work than it looks like. We have Janner Shashasana, which is a nice pose, but use props if you need to support the knee. And it's always nice to give a little assist. Why not? I like assists. Some folks might need a little support under the ankle bone more than the knee. But if you have knee issues, have a little support there. Have a little support under the ankle bone so you're keeping the leg in alignment if you can. This is a little too much. Janna Shashasana. And it's going to be forehead to knee this direction. I like to just sit for a moment and I put a little pressure here. You can also just play with this. And, I mean, you can do the static pose and that's fine. You can play in a pose or maybe explore is a more appropriate word to see how your body feels and what feels interesting, new, or it brings a new awareness. But at some point, settle into the pose. The full pose, you're clasping your hands around the foot. I haven't eased into the pose yet. And remember, Shelby, what does asana mean? Uh, taking a seat with ease. Oh, she's brilliant. Shelby is brilliant. Oh, so having a little twist and coming in. See that forehead, <laughs> nose to knee. Uh huh. Oh, it's an idea. It's an idea. If it happens, that's nice. You can reach around now and then come up. It just takes a little bit of moving into the pose with ease. You can look up, but that's hard on the neck. So I like my spine to be long, and then I use my hands to walk the spine up carefully. Support that knee, give it a little hug. So here's one of the sage poses, a sitting pose, Marichi Adasana. And anytime I cross the leg over, Matsi Andrasana, like I'm crossing the T. So Marichi Adasana. I'm going to slide that leg long, support the other knee up and out into Janner Shasana. Hmm. This ankle doesn't collapse quite as much as the other one. 
And if you can't get your foot tucked all the way up, it can be further out. You can use a support. So honor where your body is safely. And a couple little gentle twists here. Nice to feel the pose. Looking over one shoulder and the other. Here comes the rain. You can slide the opposite hand down the outside, but that's a big stretch to start. If you're not quite ready for this oblique action, just walk the fingertips out. Roll the hips a little bit. Adjust. Maybe take, take a little toe in your finger and stretch open and release. Stretch and release. And then you can walk out a little further forward. Each side is completely different depending on what's happening in your body. So honor that and find your Janashashasana. Hmm. Nose to knee. Bringing that bent leg up, supporting it with the forearm, rolling it up. So I'm pulling the skin on the shin up. I'm sitting tall. I'm not collapsing. I want to be able to breathe. I want the organs free. A few breaths here. And you can let the head be playful. Nice exercises for the neck. And Matsyandrasana, Narichyanasana. Slide it out, Dhanadasana. Let's go through a little playful. Let the river looked like it was up, but I don't think it is. I think I was just seeing the pike path. <laughs> wow. Okay. Cobbler pose, Vadakanasana. And you can do a little flutter by. And you can stretch it out a little if that feels better for you. And lift the spine. It's fun here because you can activate different trigger points or pressure points. Oh, that's a pretty good one. End of meridian points. And yin, we work with a lot of the lower meridians and we try to find the activation points. In fact, we will use colored markers and draw them along our legs so we know where they are and all the major points along them so that while you're in a pose, you can be activating a trigger point and then you ease yourself into the pose. Oftentimes with support, oftentimes holding for three to five minutes because yin is the cool side of the mountain, the feminine side of yoga, the dark side of yoga. Feminine and the dark side of yoga, I like that. We are entering into the season of thin veils, Halloween. So it is the time that our ancestors are more open to communicating and talking to us, our spirit guides, so be aware of that if you believe in such things, and I do. So another seated pose from Bhadakanasana, we went into Upavista, uh, an angled pose, Upavista Kanasana. And I like to just use one arm, it doesn't matter which arm we start with, Pushing gently down on the opposite hip. Oh, that feels good because it's creating space so you can crawl out of your shell, on the shell of the pelvic bowl. We shrink through the day. Gravity does its job pretty well. So let's reach up and out. And you can slide down if you like and hold on to a toe for support, encouraging the opposite hip down. This is a lovely stretch. If it feels comfortable, or just be playful with that arm, reaching it up and open, up into eye position, straight up, and maybe even over, 
but don't overdo it. Lateral bends, adding an oblique twist to them, can have some tricky little things to the SI joints, so be cautious. Or if you have disc problems uh, or osteoporosis and osteopenia, lift before you twist and just do very gentle motions. No sense having an issue or a problem. Maybe this is your pose. Feels pretty good. <laughs> I might just stay here. So you can move down. You can bend a knee if you need. You can have a support under a knee if you need. So make the pose yours. And then find, like Shelby was saying, the ease in the pose. And then like Angela and Victor, two of my other incredibly amazing yoga teachers, on teacher on, on yoga teacher training. <laughs> I love them. They're so fun. They are the true embodied yoga people because they're all about just exploring and finding the pose. And they are some of the first extremely well-trained Iyengar students uh, during that time period, Mr. BKS Iyengar. So serious yogi, serious introduction to the philosophy, history, of the limbs of yoga, and then finally decided we're missing the whole point of yoga. Let's get back into our bodies and into the spirit of yoga. And they are now mostly residing in Greece. I hope, I hope, I hope, I plan, I plan, I plan to get there and visit them one day. Amazing people. They also have many things on YouTube uh, and a lot of online classes. I actually grabbed my phone for a minute. You know, there's a lot of bad information on the web and YouTube, and there's a lot of fabulous information. And just through whatever Google or however you search things out, just look at seated yoga poses. Look at gentle seated yoga flows. If you don't like mine, some people cannot stand me as a yoga instructor. That's fine. Some people love me, and that's great. So find what works for you, but pick out something safe uh, and, and, and explore as you go. But there is a lot of resources. You can get the Sanskrit names, you can get safety tips. I mean, this is a powerful tool. Uh, get a friend, broadcast it on a big screen TV, and have at it. So Upavista Kanasana up to Baba Kanasana. Mm. And I like to give my toes a little attention here. So you can stretch them back. Don't forget the little piggies. And then you can have a nice little reflexology session. Some people can actually roll their feet open like a book. And you can get in there and activate some of these points that might need some attention. You would think it would make it more difficult, but using a block or a prop in Baddha Konasana can actually make it more achievable. You can use something soft. You have different lay, uh, heights of blocks, but you, uh, 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 you might be surprised at how amazing just lifting the, the legs off the ground makes it easier to open up. Why is that? You're putting your legs in more alignment. You're putting the femurs, the, the big bone at the top, more in line with the hip joint. So it's not such an angle or a strain. So this feels pretty good, and I can get way more external rotation. Now, I'm not a big external rotator. And close them on. One pose, I can't remember if we've practiced or not. It's a little more challenging. If you've had knee uh, replacements or hip replacements, uh, I don't know what to tell you, be careful. <laughs> I would maybe talk with your doctor. I would know how the hip replacement was put in, front, side, back. Um, how long ago did it go in? Where, where you are in your healing. But it actually, this pose feels really good to me. And I don't like a whole lot of oblique 
poses sometimes. But let's do a couple of oh, cat cows over here before we come into it. Let's work those piriformis muscles a little bit. We're rotating the external rotators in our hips. You can slide in and out of a cobra for a minute, make it a little fun flow cobra. I believe we did that the other day, but we might have been one of the tapes we lost, so you're seeing it now. Ekapadaraja Padmasana. Cautious if you're having your hands firmly implanted on the earth that you're not cramming the wrist into the earth. You're slipping the hand into this magic support of a glove and the elbow eyes come forward so the chest can open up. Reach through the back uh, leg and heel so you can open and you can play with it, float around, come down, rest, have a bolster, feels good, and come back around. Sukhasana, easy pose. We'll do the other side before we float into Gomakasana. Again, even just variations of pigeon will allow you to work some of these flexors, adductors, abductors, and piriformis muscles, glutes, before you slide into, they call it shoestring pose and yin yoga. They have all sorts of different names for things. Uh, you kind of feel like a shoestring all tied up by the time you're done. <laughs> um, lovely. You can use a prop here if you don't have a bolster. This is nice. Mm. This is actually a very nice stretch for the inner hamstrings almost into the gracilis and a couple other of those. Honestly don't know if they're an adductor or what they're associated with, but pretty complex group of muscles in here. Ugh. So, Ekapadaraja Padnasana, and then we're going to come around and we're going to start from tabletop. We're going to have some props. Ooh, there's a nice stretch to the back of the heels. You'll probably need something to come into and sit down on. And I'll do this at this angle, and then I'll do it sideways so you can see using the prop. You can use a rolled up blanket. To come and sit down on, that works for some folks. So you have a little support, and you don't have to go down quite as far. You can also use a block. It's not bad, but it's a little wide extension there for some folks. So on a tabletop, I'm moving one knee forward and center, and then I'm bringing the uh, lower leg inside as I cross the other leg under and tuck those knees up tight. You're going to have an extra blanket down here for your knees. And then you just slowly, slowly, slowly <laughs> roll down. If you have your support, that helps. <laughs> Walk the feet out. And if you're able, the knees will be stacked nicely. I have a little twist here. And this is part of cow pose gomakasana. You can do the hand postures this way. I just like to sit here. <laughs> That's enough of a stretch for me. I'll guarantee you'll feel it in one hip flexor and piriformis. This is also a wonderful opportunity to give yourself a little reflexology treatment. And it certainly takes <laughs> your awareness away from your hip flexors. Settle into this pose. I think I would worry more with hip replacements than knee replacements, but honestly, I'm not a physician. I don't know that much about that, so please confer with them as you move into this. But it's a lovely stretch. Let's try to capture some of this wild stuff here. So I'm lifting up and out. And the longer you sit here and breathe and relax into it, and you can build yourself up as tall as you need, 
easier it becomes. You can take a pillow, a bolster, another gold blanket here, and you begin to move forward. Oh, yes. Ah, oh, it's lovely. It's wonderful. And ease into the bed. Using the support of your hands, roll up. Gently push yourself forward. Come back through tabletop. Give it a couple cat cows. Maybe sit back onto your toes. Maybe slide forward. And then again, I'll do the other side at a slightly different angle. Before I move there, though, we're going to do half camel. We did this in class the other day. It worked out pretty well. If you have issues with your knees, feel free to um, fold the mat up underneath your knees. So again, camel is a slight back bend, but you're not hyperextending the lower back. I mean, you're not crushing the lower back. So you're reaching through the psoas, the hip flexors here, and they're hard to stretch. And you can have your uh, fists or hands on your hips to keep reaching them down, reaching them down. Uh, Donna Nava Stapleton, he always like, put your hands in your back pockets. <laughs> Open the shoulders, and again, watch if you have shoulder issues, and just slide up and down a few times on each side. Even this tactile nature of touching yourself helps find a pose. And it helps create memories. If, if you're against a wall, you can keep the wall to keep supporting your leaning this way, but the spine is going up and out. Reach one arm up, float it back to the heel and look, bring it back. Other arm and back. We'll just do one sided camel today. Eventually, it's both arms that come back, but that's a big stretch, so just practice with one. And you're lengthening as much as you're bending. So I'm going to reverse. My angle, so you can see, I'm using this nice, neat. Uh, let's see where I went. This is the second side. And again, each side may be very different. So front knee goes forward. The lower leg comes out underneath. The knees are tucked nicely together. Roll down onto your support. Try to work both feet in line. They may not get there. That's fine. Try to stack the knees. Those are all just goals. It may not happen. But you'll begin to feel this unfurl. And it's extremely freeing. Shoulders are draping down the back. Scapulas are active. Core is on. You can roll the neck. Scraping in along chin, along chest. Nice action here. Just sitting, enjoying. You can use a support to come forward on, or you can come forward on your own and hang for a few minutes. And let the posture do its work. Come out, lean forward, a couple maybe little stretches for the arches, a couple cat cows, slide over into a Bharatvajasana. You need a support to create equanimity, that's fine. And then 
I'm going to recede into my famous court pose and bid you all an amazing October 21st and an upcoming fabulous Halloween, although we'll see each other probably before then, although these will be posted at different times. <laughs> so I'm going to use these props tight up here. You can start with smaller ones. Some folks, I'll just show you this, use a nice four folded blanket. Uh, you can, depending on the length of your legs. And if you're going to fold a blanket, Linda Cochran, one of my favorite yoga teachers, will tell you it's worth folding neatly, which I just didn't do a very good job. So <laughs> that's not a four fold. Hey, Linda, this is a messy fold. <laughs> and this would go under your leg. Or you could fold it long so only the heel drapes off. But since I'm laying here and this feels good to me, get it adjusted, whoosh away, have something for your head if you need, but don't have your head too elevated, but don't have your chin sticking out. And I really encourage you, oh, this is delightful. Try your four, seven, ten breath. Inhale, four, four, belly going down. Try to keep those ribs in. Pause for seven. And exhale, nine or ten. Try that for three to seven breaths. And just let it go. Quite lovely. Quite lovely. Toning the vagal nerve and enhancing your stress resiliency. I want to again thank Shelby for taking her time. She changed days this week so we could do this taping and for the Athens County Library and all the amazing folks who enjoy yoga, share yoga, and create our yoga community in Athens, Ohio. Namaste.